Hello everyone, if you're in my class, congratulations, you've made it to the 20th century. We are going to start with the Great War, as it was known at the time, as it is now more commonly known, World War I. We're going to today talk about the causes of that war and how it actually got started. So by the time we are done, you should be able to identify the causes of the war, both long and short term. So there were some things that had been building up for a long time, and there is one particular immediate catalyst of the war. You should be able to uh, describe and identify what all of those are by the time we're done. You should be able to describe how the alliance system, which we'll go over in pretty good detail, uh, led to the development of a much larger war than it looked like it was going to be initially. And you should be able to identify or define those terms, Alsace and Lorraine, that should be reviewed from when we went over franco prussian War. The Triple Alliance and Triple Entente, those are the two main alliances we're going to discuss. Archduke Franz Ferdinand and the Black Hand. So here we go with World War I, but first a quote from Otto von Bismarck, that father of German unification in the 1870s. He said before his death, I shall not live to see the Great War, but you will see it, and it will start in the East. Now Bismarck died in 1898, so it's pretty apparent that even, you know, 15 or 20 years before World War I started, you could sort of see it coming, that discontent throughout Europe. Uh, was beginning to fester the seeds of nationalism, especially in that area of Eastern Europe where they wanted uh, control and, and power for themselves instead of being controlled by outside powers. Another quote of Bismarck, which also proved to be correct, uh, was, if there's ever another war in Europe, it'll come out of some damn silly thing in the Balkans. Again, dead on correct. The Balkans is the area uh, east of Italy, across the Adriatic Sea, it contains what we now know as, say, Greece, Albania, Serbia, Bosnia, that whole area in southeastern Europe. And that is exactly where World War I started. So today, we are going to talk about how that actually happened. First, the long-term causes, nationalism, nothing new. We've been talking about that a good bit in uh, my class. Germany wanted to grow its military power. Germany had always been very militaristic, and after it unified, it was looking for ways to assert its power and become the premier, most powerful country in Europe. France had a little bit of a revenge thing going. They were very, very bitter and upset after they lost the Franco-Prussian War, and they wanted back what they had lost, namely Alsace and Lorraine, which is a, a pair of provinces on the border between France and Germany that had been constantly fought over because it was very, very rich in natural resources. France really, really badly wanted that uh, back under their control. Russia wanted what it called Pan-Slavism. Uh, that was unity among the Slavic countries. That's Eastern Europe. Uh, areas like on this map, Slovakia, Poland, Hungary, Yugoslavia. Those are not necessarily countries that existed at that time, but you get the idea. That area over there, sort of east of Germany, uh, Russia saw all of those countries as having kind of a common um, ancestral thread, as it were, and kind of wanted to unify those areas. As a result, they supported and protected a lot of nations in the Balkans, uh, like Serbia, whereas, you know, if, if Serbia was attacked, Russia had pledged to support it and all that. Coming out of nationalism is the idea of militarism. There was a big arms race in Europe, partially fueled by industrialization, partially fueled by just this idea of national pride. Um, we talked about nationalism on a couple of different uh, strains, one being this idea that you want to be ruled by people who are like you. You know, Germans want to rule the German state or Germany, um, for example. Militarism is another form of nationalism, I guess you could say, in that all of these countries wanted to have the strongest military. Um, so there, there was this sort of um, uh, urgency in building up the military because, like Bismarck said, you can sort of see this conflict coming many, many years ahead of time, and all of these countries wanted to be ready when that conflict came. Another long-term cause of World War I is the alliance system. Uh, one of these big alliances is the Triple Alliance, consists of Germany, Italy, and Austria-Hungary. These are agreements that had been made uh, mostly in the late 1800s in the aftermath of German and Italian unification. Um, they're there on the map in red. The Triple Entente is the other major alliance that formed uh, in Europe, mostly in response to the Triple Alliance. Uh, these countries, Russia, France, and Britain, saw 
this unification of Central and Southern European countries and said to themselves, well, we better make our own alliance in case these three countries gang up on us. And the easiest way to remember which is which is that Entente is a French word. So therefore, um, the triple Entente is the alliance uh, that France was included in. But make sure you know which country for in each alliance. Uh, that'll be important down the road. Now, the short term or the immediate cause of World War I is the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, who was the heir to the throne in the Kingdom of Austria-Hungary. There had been a lot of small-scale conflicts in the Balkans, that area of southeastern Europe, in the years before 1914. So tensions were very, very high, and a lot of diplomats started referring to that area as the powder keg of Europe as in a giant keg of gunpowder. And all it would take was one spark that would just set that whole thing off and lead to a humongous war. And it turns out that that was very, very, very correct. There was a lot of anger in the Balkans at Austria-Hungary because Austria-Hungary controlled most of the Balkans. And so uh, Serbia especially uh, was upset about having Austria-Hungary basically you know, have hegemony over them. So when Archduke Franz Ferdinand, with his wife Sophie, pictured there, decided to visit Bosnia in the Balkans, it angered a lot of Serbian nationalists because um, a lot of Serbs lived in Bosnia as well. So an assassination plot was set up by this nationalist group called the Black Hand, which did get some of its funding from the Serbian government directly. And one of the members of the Black Hand named Gavrio Princip assassinated the Archduke and his wife in a parade in Sarajevo on June 28, 1914. Here is a picture of the assassin, Gavrio Princip, a Serbian nationalist member of the Black Hand. Uh, the bottom picture there is the car they were riding in when uh, they were shot, Archduke Ferdinand and his wife Sophie. And on the top there, the New York Times headline uh, proclaiming their death. Um, so just giving you an idea that this is worldwide news, you know, this came all the way to New York. Now, Archduke Ferdinand's assassination triggers a chain reaction of events that's going to lead to World War I. Austria-Hungary was pretty upset about the heir to the throne to their country being killed in what essentially was a terrorist plot, partially financed and bankrolled and supported by another country, that being Serbia. So Austria-Hungary issues an ultimatum, a series of warnings to Serbia to punish the assassins and allow Austria-Hungary to cooperate in the investigation, etc., etc. Serbia agreed to some of the demands, but not all of them. Uh, part of the reason being uh, they weren't constitutionally allowed to. The uh, Austro-Hungarians demanded, for example, that members, certain members of the Black Hand be extradited or sent to Austria-Hungary for trial, and Serbia, by law, could not uh, extradite its own citizens. So they couldn't agree to that one. And Austria-Hungary knew ahead of time they couldn't agree to that demand. They just wanted an excuse to go to war with Serbia. So one month to the day after the assassination, on July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Now, this triggers the alliance system that we just talked about. Germany had already pledged to support Austria-Hungary in the event this happened. Um, Germany was sort of looking for an excuse to go to war to flex its military muscles, so Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany basically told Austria-Hungary, look, if you want to get revenge on Serbia, go for it, we'll be behind you. What a lot of people didn't actually know is that Russia had already pledged to support Serbia if they were attacked. So when Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, Russia basically starts to get its military ready and essentially declares war on Austria-Hungary. France had pledged to support Russia if they ended up going to war, so France gets involved, and then Germany declares war on France. So you can see it was just like one domino after the other being knocked over that leads to this war starting. That's all for today. In the next video, we're going to talk about how World War I is different from a lot of other wars, really any other war that had been fought up to that time, both in terms of technology and the general strategies on both sides. As always, ask your teachers if you have any questions, and be sure to review this video uh, in advance of your unit test. Cheers.